this episode, we're going to look at push notifications within our Rails application. And with push notifications, you do have to get your user input. So if we see a message that the website wants to show notifications, we can hit allow. If we ever want to change this behavior within Chrome, at least, you can click on the view site information and then change the notifications back to ask, which would then prompt you again, or to block to prevent notifications. And a notification will look like this. So we're going to create a send notification button, and that's going to show us, in this case on Mac OS, a little notification off to the side. And if we expand our notifications, we can see that that notification popped up, and this is the native Mac OS notification panel. And we're also going to look at, when we reload a page, we're going to see that a push notification has been sent for visiting this web page. We're going to use Action Cable to send out that notification to a channel. And you will also want to make sure that you check the caniuse.com and search for the push API because push notifications are not available on all browsers. For example, with Internet Explorer, if that's your primary audience, then push notifications aren't really going to be an option for you. However, with Edge, Firefox, and Chrome, there is native support for all of them, and Safari has its own custom implementation for the push notifications. However, for iOS devices, push notifications are still not supported. So in our example application today, we're not going to do any kind of authorization or authentication around the notifications that get pushed, but we will look at that in a future episode. In this episode, we're primarily going to be focused on getting the initial framework set up for the push notifications. So we'll start in the app, JavaScript, Packs, application.js. And within here, I'm going to put a notification, and then we are going to request permission. Once we request a permission, then we can run a function, and then we're going to take in the result. And you could do something like a if result dot permission equals denied. Then you could do something. However, in this case, we're just going to first request the permission. And if we start up our Rails server, and if we go to our application and refresh, I'm going to set this back to default. And then it'll ask us to reload the page. You now see that it's asking us to show notifications. And I'll go ahead and click allow. And then in our index action view of our welcomes controller, I'm just going to create a link and it's going to be a link to send notification. And we want to send this to our welcome index path. And I'm going to just pass in a remote true on here. And this will make the request a JavaScript request. So normally if I just refresh this page, you see that it's getting processed by our welcome controller and the index action as an HTML format. However, if I hit the send notification, you now see that it's also going to the welcome controller to the index action, but it's going as a JS. So this would expect, instead of rendering a welcome index HTML.erb, instead when we render it as a JS file, we can create an index.js.erb and it would render and execute that JavaScript instead. So in our welcomes view, I'm going to create another file, and this is just going to be our index.js.erb. So we can have an if notification, and then we want to check the permission. If this is granted, then we can execute some JavaScript. So I'm going to create a title variable, and I'm going to just call this the push notification. I'll then create some kind of body text, and I'll just call that the triggered by link. And then we can create some options. And within these options, I'm just going to set the body equal to the variable body that we just created. We can then call new notification. And then we need to pass in our title and then also the options. So now if we come in and refresh our application, the initial request is coming over as HTML. But then if we hit the send notification, you then see that it gets rendered by the js.erb, and now we have our push notification. And if we wanted to, we could come in here and then change the text and add in some erb. So let's just do something like a rails.env, and then we could just change the body to something like trigger by link on the rails environment environment. And coming back and testing this out now, 
You now see that we got our push notification triggered by the link on the development environment. So next, I'm going to generate a channel, and this is for our action cable, and I'm just going to call this the notification. And this is going to create a few different files. Specifically, we're going to get in our app channels a notification channel, and this is where we can set our stream that we're going to stream from. And then in the app JavaScript channels, we're going to get our notification channel, and this is where we can handle messages that are getting broadcasted to the stream that we are subscribed to. So in the app channels, in the notification channel, I want to stream from a channel, and I'm just going to call this the notification channel. And so right now, anyone who is streaming from this channel is going to get our broadcasted message. And again, in a future episode, we're going to look at locking this down. So only the current user who should receive the notification will actually get pushed that notification. And then in our JavaScript, in the channels, we have a notification channel JS file. And in the received, we're going to then execute something. So very similar, in our index.js.erb, I'm going to just copy this code, and then I'm going to paste it into the notification channels in the received function. And instead of setting the body to this text, instead, I'm just going to set it to the data, and that data is getting received from the broadcast. We can then go into our controllers, and in the welcome controller, and I'm just going to put it here as an example. So in your use case, you might want to have this in a background job or something where once a background job is completed or a certain kind of event is triggered, you can then broadcast a notification to the notification channel so a user can be aware of some action that has occurred or been performed. So I'm going to call the action cable .server broadcast. We're going to broadcast to the notification channel and then we can pass in our message. And the message I'll just pass in is you have visited the welcome page. And this is going to be the data attribute that gets received to the notification channel. So if we go back and refresh, you see that now we got a notification that you have visited the welcome page. And if I hit the send notification, that's actually going to trigger the first notification. But if we look in the history, it also triggered the push notification for you have visited the welcome page because we are going to the welcome controllers index action. And that's where we have that broadcast for the action cable. So in this case, it did trigger both of the notifications. And so in a future episode, we're going to look at locking down our action cable. So the push notifications only get broadcasted to the appropriate users. And again, make sure that you check the caniuse.com to make sure that your target audience is using a supported browser. And another good website that you can use is what web can do today. And under the features, under the native behaviors, you'll see the push messages. And you'll want to make sure that whichever browser that you're on, that this is checked. So if you were to visit this on iOS Safari or even iOS Chrome, You'll see that this is marked with the red X, meaning that push notifications will not come to those devices and those browsers. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.